And so I'll pass it off to Grace, who is a development associate for Strong Towns and uh, the lead taking the responsibility in terms of managing all the applications that come in for the Community Action Lab, as well as being a, an incredible resource offering uh, lots of answers as to what the Community Action Lab, lab is and uh, what our process is that we're going to be following as we look for uh, 2024 candidates for the Community Action Lab. Go ahead, Grace. Yeah, thank you everyone for being here. Um, as Norm said, we're we're getting ready to launch our 2024 cycle for the Community Action Lab, which is why you are all here. Um, applications are now open. Um, we're hoping that applications can be submitted by August 1st. So mark that on your calendar. Um, and yeah, Chuck's, Chuck's gonna give us a broad overview about the program, and then we're gonna go into a Q&A. So as he presents, if you have any questions, just drop them in the Q&A and I'll be keeping track of them as we go. Um, all right, so- Thank Chuck, you, Grace. Take it away. Yeah, nice to see you. And I am uh, literally coming in hot, like I've been in the office for 25 minutes now, getting back from Medicine Hat in Alberta, Canada, which is one of our four uh, community action lab communities for this year. I will be uh, here in the office tomorrow and then Monday at noon, uh, getting on a plane and flying to Florida. Lake County, Florida is the second of our uh, community action lab communities for, for 2023. So lots of this stuff ongoing, very intense, uh, lots of, uh, Lots of stuff going on, and I'm I'm interested in in chatting with people about potential for next year. So, um, let me walk you through the program and kind of the background, uh, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish, and 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 how we set this up. Uh, Strong Towns as a nonprofit organization, we have a, a strategic plan that we put together, and a big part of the latest strategic plan was this initiative to bring Strong Towns out into communities across North America. Um, the inspiration for this was really a, a group in Lake County, Florida, who came to us, and, and this is a quote from them, uh, we wanna change everything. Uh, we just found Strong Towns. I want everyone to know about it. I want my entire community to change. Uh, please make this happen. And I'll, I'll tell you that this is not a uh, infrequent thing for us. We have a lot of people who often find strong towns. They're searching for an answer to something. They come across our website. They come across an article we wrote, something we put on social media or, or a video, and they start to dig in and they just go deeper and deeper and deeper. And when they emerge from that, they become, in a sense, evangelists for strong towns. And they say, I, I want everybody to know about this. I want to change everything in my community. Um, we love this. I mean, there's a there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm, a lot of excitement that comes out of interactions like this. Uh, but until recently, we haven't had a way to respond to that beyond say, hey, go out and talk to people, go out and share information, um, go out and be present in your community. Um, the Community Action Lab is an attempt by us to put together a program programmatic response to this question and this desire. And so the Community Action Lab is designed to do three things simultaneously in a place. It's designed to take those ideas that people have discovered and share them broadly. In a sense, uh, get the people in your community exposed to Strong Town's thinking, Strong Town's ideas, Strong Town's way of analyzing problems and challenges, and, and Strong Town's way of responding to those expose people in your community to these ideas on a broad scale. In doing so, shift the conversation uh, away from the types of projects that we're doing now, the types of solutions we're coming up with, the types of responses that we have to our struggles into a different way of thinking. And then back that up with implementation. So getting uh, implementation on the ground going, so that as people are demanding other things, as local leadership is demanding other things, as they're saying, how do we do this? We actually train in a team to go out and start doing things differently, start implementing so people can see results right away. The overall goal of the program is to change the conversation. And we are in at Strong Towns, the messaging business. So when we say change the conversation, we're talking about 
having the conversation at public meetings be different. But we're also talking about having the conversation at City Hall amongst the staff, amongst people working there be different. And we're also talking about the public conversation uh, at coffee shops, at soccer fields, at barbecues, wherever people get together. We want people to be talking about things in their community differently. Uh, I just got back, as I said, from Medicine Hat in Alberta, Canada, and we had a meeting with the city council and one of the city council members said, uh, I was at the doctor's office a couple of weeks ago and I'm sitting in the waiting room and some people uh, were there and they found out I was on the city council and they said, what about this strong town stuff? And they started having questions about strong towns and about the city's uh, approach. This is exactly what we're trying to create is a community-wide dialogue uh, on really different grounds than the grounds we generally have these discussions today. Um, I put this in because I, I wanna make very clear from the front what this is not, because this is not a consulting arrangement. We're not here to do public relations for the community. Um, we're not offering technical assistance in the sense that we are going to design things for you or write reports for you or any of that kind of stuff. Um, we're really, this is not a consulting relationship. In fact, in the last week when we were in Medicine Hat, we were having this conversation um, with the council and we talked about the relationship being one of coaching, one of providing guidance. And I used uh, this analogy of a drug intervention or someone who is a uh, has a substance abuse problem and you do an intervention where you sit down and meet with them and, and try to get them to do something that they don't wanna do. And the other end of the spectrum being a life coach where someone comes to you and says, we want things to be different here. Uh, help guide us through what that would look like. Help, help me improve things. And we talked about how Strong Towns is not on the intervention end of the spectrum. We are on the life coach end of the spectrum. The idea is, is we want places that are coming to us saying, we want to do things differently. We want to have this dialogue. We want to have this conversation. We want to walk this path, walk with us and help make this path easier to walk. Help us navigate it. Help us get through this. Help us get up and running as a, as a real strong town. Along with that, uh, and I kind of think this goes to my intervention versus life coach analogy. Um, we're going to help you think differently, but we're not here to tell you what to do. And we're really not here to kind of push things down your throat or force you to do things differently. We're actually not looking for places that are interested in that. Um, we're looking for places that are interested in, uh, again, walking a different path, going in a different direction and having us be a, a coach to them at the leadership level, at the staff level, and, and broadly in dialogue with the community for what that would look like and how we would uh, do that. So in terms of what we actually do, what we actually do in the Community Action Lab process is to bring all the facets of kind of the Strong Towns organization and focus them and bring them to bear on one specific place. So we begin uh, with our, our audiences. Um, Public officials are, we, we think as an organization in terms of the relationship and how we're sharing information and having dialogue uh, audiences. One audience we have is public officials, people who are elected, people who are appointed, people who are leadership within uh, the community. Um, the second being technical staff, people who are advising them. Uh, and then the third audience being the general public. Uh, how do we reach this broad community dialogue and have that coffee shop talk, that soccer field talk, the barbecue talk uh, shift and change as well. So we are over the course of a 12 month period going to do three community events. Um, and, and I'm gonna put the caveat on there, at least three community events. Um, I think I'm gonna be going back to Medicine Hat and doing an, an extra day here just because uh, we need it to keep some stuff moving there. Uh, but the idea is that when we do an event, um, there are multiple things going on at one time. The event we just got done uh, working at in Medicine Hat included uh, meetings with different groups at different times. It also involved Norm coming to town and doing a, a, a public presentation and a local uh, uh, community conversation uh, gathering. 
And so there's many, many things that go on in an event. An event is usually a one, two, sometimes a little bit more, uh, depending on the agenda and what we're trying to accomplish, uh, engagement. But the idea is that we would do three of these. When we do an event, there's media ahead of time. There's media after that. Um, it's a big kind of public engagement thing. The idea is to kind of get the message out in a very high profile way uh, through three different uh, events in the community. Um, we also will be using our media platform and kind of directing it or redirecting it uh, towards that area. Um, we do a lot of content marketing at Strong Towns. Uh, you can think of this as paid placements. So if you're ever on a social media platform or another place and you see an, an ad, um, you may come across our stuff. We don't, it doesn't look like an ad selling you stuff. It looks more like content trying to engage you. We use the same kind of uh, tactics and procedures in terms of targeting audiences, uh, getting content in front of people that is engaging, um, but not polarizing bring people in as part of a conversation, uh, retarget them in a way that we call nurturing. So nurture that relationship, giving people follow-up stuff and inviting them to be part of a, a dialogue. We do this as a regular course of business across all of North America. What we do for our community action labs is we actually have a budget where we target that community uh, with this type of ongoing engagement. Um, we build an email list. Those lists expand over time. We do weekly nurturing of those lists. So providing data, information, uh, background, and connecting people to the ongoing discourse that's going along uh, with the Community Action Lab process. Um, we then have uh, our Strong Towns Academy site uh, where with the public dialogue, we direct people here, but we also uh, work really closely with elected officials and with that technical staff and the action team that we uh, create as part of this process um, to have a curriculum, I think it would be the best way to talk about it, uh, that uh, forms kind of the basis of this ongoing dialogue. In fact, I'm going to exit out of sharing my screen here, and I'm going to actually show you what the site looks like, because I think it's a lot better than um, what I put on the screen, and I think I can show you in a little bit more detail. So if you go to academy.strongtowns.org, uh, you can click on the top here on Community Action Lab, and it will bring up the, uh, the public-facing uh, site here for each community that we're working in. I'm going to click on Medicine Hat. We just got back from Medicine Hat. Um, there is a uh, public-facing portion, and there is an internal portion of this. The internal portion is the exact same, except with a different dialogue going on and maybe slightly more technical information that's provided. Um, but the idea here is that anybody in the community can sign up to participate. And we build this out with the action team over time. So as we go through this process, uh, one of the things we start with is, you know, after our first kind of kickoff event is where are the areas that you're struggling with? What are the things that you are having a difficult time with? And we work with this action team to explore those items. So you'll see each uh, exploration, each kind of two to three week period is a different session. Um, each session is going to have a, a number of lessons that go with it that delve into certain Strong Towns principles. Uh, these will be communicated in writing, uh, with handouts, with video, with audio, with links to different things that we've put together. Some of these are put together specifically for this engagement. Some of it draws on our overall uh, content library. Um, but you can see, if you're familiar with Strong Towns, uh, that you know each session is going into topics that are familiar, um, but each session also has deep dives and discussions that are pertinent to the community. Um, if you go through, we're you know, halfway through the year with these, so there's quite a bit here in each of them. You can go check these out and take a look at the, you can sign up for the public side if you want for any of these. Um, we use our marketing approach to uh, bring people to the site and have them walk through it with us. At the same time, uh, we have the action team that we are working with. I talked earlier about implementation having on the ground implementation, that's gonna come through our engagement with the action team. So the action team is a group of 12 to 15 people in each of our community action lab communities. Um, in, 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 in 
Two of them, it is simply technical staff. And one of them, it is a broader kind of community leadership, uh, kind of active people group. And in one of them, it is a mix of all of that. It's a much smaller town. And so there's a little bit of elected, a lot of uh, community act people who are active in the community and a few technical staff. But we get a, a group of 12 to 15 people together and they uh, help us, in a sense, direct the curriculum, where we're going to go with this. So we start off by asking them, you know, what are the struggles you have? Where are we having a difficult time? We start to delve into those and we start to kind of build the curriculum around analyzing, understanding those problems, those challenges, and coming up with different uh, strong towns, uh, ways of thinking about it, ways of analyzing it, and ways of uh, approaching those problems. Everybody who's on the action team is going to get full access to all of the courses at Strong Towns. Um, everything that's on our academy site, they have free access to. Everything that uh, we have, they have full access to. We meet with this group every two to three weeks by Zoom. Uh, we meet in person when we do the events, but then by Zoom, we're meeting every two to three weeks. Um, in between those, we release one of these new sessions. The session will have, in a sense, you can think of it as homework to go through. Uh, there are, uh, you know, as I said before, videos, audio, different things to read, different things to reference uh, to get yourself up to speed for the next Zoom session that we're going to have. Um, we work on applying Strong Towns principles to local challenges. So if you sign up for any of these and start to go through them, you'll see that they start kind of general uh, because we're introducing things and we're kind of getting people talking and having a discussion. Uh, but then they get very specific very quickly because we're dealing with um, difficult challenges. Uh, I, the last two days in Medicine Hat, there's a lot of uh, deep things we're working on there. A lot of, we, we, we call this a full contact experience. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. So you'll see as you go through that it gets very um, technical and very specific very, very quickly. Um, so yes, the customized curriculum with readings, video, expert sessions. Um, the one thing that we're recognizing about this as, as we go on is that um, doing it in this way through the academy with a curriculum that we create in a sense, session by session by session with the community, um, it allows people to pick up who might have missed the beginning of the process. So in Medicine Hat, for example, we had about 500 people show up to our kickoff uh, event. Uh, it was a fantastic event. It was very well attended. People were very enthusiastic. We got a lot of people signed up um, and we got them into this program. But someone who two months, three months later wants to come on board can go into the Action Lab. Say they saw a Facebook ad or, or engaged with us on, on some other social media platform and they wound up on the Action lab site, um, they can get connected. They can watch that kickoff event. They can get all the kind of introductory stuff that everybody else got, and they can start right through the process and get caught up and then follow along with the rest of the community as they go. Um, that site will be available not only throughout this entire process, but in subsequent years so that uh, that community dialogue can continue to expand and grow. And there's kind of a common framework that people can reference. Um, one of the other things that goes along with this, and we've we've been very intentional about not promising that we can deliver on a local conversation, um, but in three of the four places that we've worked in, we've seen them uh, already emerge there. Our local conversations program is a program that we have developed uh, to help local dialogue around Strong Town's ideas. Uh, we have over 120 local conversations around the entire U.S. People who get together, uh, they get together to talk about strong towns, and then we work with them to help them go out and, and do things in their community, be difference makers in their place. Um, I said we have over 120. We have about 700 of these around the country that are in the process of being formed, including three of them in communities where we're currently doing an action lab. Uh, Medicine Hat has one that started out with four people. Uh, we went and I, I took this photo. Uh, this was kind of halfway through. So a number of people had already left, but this was the group that was meeting in Medicine Hat uh, just two nights ago as part of their local conversation. Um, these are not elected officials. These are not generally like appointed people or people within the system. They're not city staff generally. Um, these are people who uh, have 
engage with the Strong Towns message, are very interested in it, see the value in it, want it to spread throughout their community and want to be part of that spreading and part of taking action to make their place better. And so Norm, uh, who's on this call, came with us to Medicine Hat this time, and he spent his time working with the, the local conversation here uh, to help them get up and running and, and become more effective. We have a totally separate program. And the reason we don't promise that we can deliver this is because it has to be something that emerges from the bottom up. It has to be something where people in the community step forward forward and say, I want to do this. I want to carry the water on this thing. I want to make it happen. And if people do that, we have a program to walk them through. And of course, in our action lab communities, we pay very special attention and do extra effort to nurture these. We don't go send people to all 700 of these that are in formation. Uh, but we did this here because we want it to be really, really successful because of all the other hard work that's going on in the community. So the community action lab program is a two-year program. Uh, the first year is a very active phase, uh, three events, uh, all these ongoing coaching sessions. Year two, we're calling a support phase. We are still going to have uh, active dialogue with the community, um, but it's going to be a, at, at, a, at a lower level of intensity. And so what we want to do in year two is basically provide that kind of support where we can be a difference maker to keep things moving along, um, less of an active engagement and more of a support phase. Um, this depth of engagement is very intense. Uh, we had three of our staff there uh, for the last three days in Medicine Hat. Um, that takes a lot of our time and a lot of our resources. Um, we have uh, essentially everyone on our team, and there's 20 of us here now at Strong Towns, uh, touches the Community Action Lab program in one way or another. So you are getting kind of the best of what we do and our entire team focused on your community to one degree or another. Um, the cost for doing these engagements for next year is going to be somewhere between 150 and 200,000. A lot of this depends on logistics, depends on where you're at, um, depends on uh, you know, other things. We will, when we get to where we've identified places that are prepared to do this and wanna do this, um, we will work with you to put together a budget and outline a contract and an understanding, but I want to give you the uh, the kind of range that we're looking in, uh, so that uh, everybody on the call understands the level of intensity that we are talking about from our side. And I'll just note that Strong Dance is a 501c3. Um, of the action labs that we are doing this year, two of them are funded by municipalities. Um, one of them is funded by a county, and one of them is funded by a foundation. And we are happy to work uh, with whatever kind of funding arrangement uh, would work to make this happen and make sure that people have uh, skin in the game locally so that it's worth our time and worth your time to make this level of, uh, of commitment. Um, as I said, this is a full contact sport. So a lot of effort, a lot of energy goes into putting one of these on. Because of that, there's a limited number of these that we can do. Um, we have capped it at five for 2024. I don't see us going over five. We, uh, uh, we, we thought we would do five in 2023 and we ended up doing four. I think four was actually the right number. Um, what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna stretch and get places that are not ready for this. Um, we had a couple of places that were very interested in 2023. Uh, it, they weren't actually ready. And so we asked them to, be, you know, uh, kind of do some work and, and get ready for 2024 um, that we would, could re-engage with them then. Uh, so we're looking for five communities that are interested in this kind of transformation, are trying to walk down the path and want someone to walk with them, coach them, clear some obstacles and, and help them really get moving. Um, that means that what we're looking for is not only communities that have the, uh, the, the, the resources uh, and, and can tap into the resources to make this happen. But we're really very discerning um, in terms of the type of place that we want. Uh, again, I'll, I'll use that analogy of the intervention versus the life coach. Um, 
we are not here for a, an intervention. Um, if the community is going this way and you're like, we want it to go 180 degrees the other direction, um, we're not miracle workers. Uh, there's no like magical incantations we can do to change uh, places that are, you know, we want to go that way. Like we, we, I can't convince you to do otherwise. But places that are saying, we really want to do this differently. We recognize that this isn't working. We recognize that our current approach has uh, not benefited us, has harmed our community. And we would like to uh, go in a different direction. Help us do that. That's more the life coach kind of approach. And that's what we're interested in. So we want places that have great leadership support for this program. We're going to be asking for uh, a statement of that support as part of this application process when we get further in. Um, we want staff that is curious and thoughtful. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll use that phrase again. This is a full contact sport. Um, when we have people who are defensive uh, or you know a little bit parochial, some of the conversations we have are hard, are difficult. And you know, we don't do them in a way ever to antagonize people or to draw people out or to shame them. We always do it in a spirit of how do we learn? How do we get better? How do we do things differently? Um, when we can find places where the staff, the technical people in the community that are working on stuff are curious and thoughtful, we can have those difficult conversations in a way that everybody comes out positively on and, and we can make some real good change. And then we need community ambassadors. We need people in the community who care, people who are not necessarily inside the government, not necessarily technical staff who are doing things, but people who just generally care about the community are going to show up, are going to help us turn people out, are going to lead local conversations, are going to carry this dialogue to the coffee shop and the soccer field and the barbecue and all those places where we, we need it to be heard. If that is you, we want you to, to apply. So you can go to strongtowns.org slash CAL, C-A-L, Community Action Lab. And uh, you got a little thing. In fact, I will, again, uh, share my screen in a different way and show you that site because uh, it's very, uh, Grace and the team here have done a tremendous job of setting this process up to be very easy to apply. So you can go to strongtowns.org slash CAL. Um, you can click right here to apply to host in 2024. Uh, it will pop up. Uh, as Grace said, we're trying to uh, get everybody who wants to be considered and in the process in by uh, August 1st. Um, go there and apply. It's very simple. It's very easy. Uh, we will follow up with conversation with you. Grace, the other way that people can get more information besides going to this site is to contact you directly. Um, I know your email is grace at strongtowns.org, but I'm going to put that in here too so that people can contact you uh, directly if they have uh, specific questions or more information. Good. Anything you want to add to that, Grace or Norm? I, I feel like um, I threw a lot at people there really quick. Uh, is there anything that you two want to want to add to this, Norm? I, I just want to share one of the observations that I had was I think it touches on what Chuck mentioned about the counselor that's showing up at the dentist office and people are talking about it and. When we showed up at this outdoor gathering place, a really cool spot in the downtown of Medicine Hat. A lot of the folks were wondering, okay, you know, where's the program? Where's the person with the mic uh, that's going to speak to us? And deliberately, we had set up that session to be very much like people sitting at tables. I said, if you hear a conversation that you're interested in, like, go join that one. And some of the feedback was, well, I, I couldn't hear the conversations. I could hear what other people were saying, um, but I, di I didn't have a sense of uh, all of the conversations were all happening at the same time. And that's part of this process. This is that chaotic but smart process of engaging people together. And the consequence of it was really interesting for me as well, where people said, okay, so are you recording down everything that we have said? And, and then are you going to basically like streamline it? And I said, that's not what we're doing because that's not part of how a community becomes strong as well. It's not by simply passing on a note to somebody and then saying, okay, I can wash my hands, I'm, I'm done. And instead, and I also critique the way that oftentimes consultants come in, they collect comments and seemingly uh, those comments just reflect what they had already written up in the pre-report that they had submitted to the city. And so Strong Towns is committed to a very different process. And part of it, we would say, is stirring up a pot 
of local citizens that are developing the art form of being strong citizens in their place. And I think that will be one of the lasting legacies for all of these communities is the engagement of people that previously didn't either have a pathway to be engaged or just never really cared too much. Well, I shouldn't say cared too much. They cared about their neighborhood, cared about their block, cared about their neighbors, uh, but were somewhat alienated from the processes. And, and we're trying to say, when we bring local politics out of the the, the hot sort of, you know, one issue sort of uh, elections and really bring it back to where are we struggling? How can we address these things? How can we do so quickly rather than expending all of the energy in a two-year planning process with the result that it just gets shelved by the next council? We're very much trying to work a very different type of approach that says we should be seeing things beginning to emerge, especially as we move into this action stage. So I got it, it was amazing to be on the ground connecting with folks uh, in Medicine Hat. And, and as we continue to do that work, I think this is um, quite something we've had over 200,000 engagements, for example, in Medicine Hat, over 200,000 engagements on social media with our content. That's people are interacting within the community as we're tracking what they're sharing and or the discussions that they're having. But we had 500 people show up at the first public event. We had 50 people show up for an event uh, at the yard. We had another 30 people show up. And so it's interesting, all of the different increments. Sometimes it's about 10 people sitting around a community table. Other times it's about 500 people in a theater. Other times it's 200,000 people online engaging together, or not 200,000 people necessarily, but 200,000 engagements together. And, and that is what we know is going to change the conversation in your community. Out of that 200,000 number, because that was what uh, the total number of online engagements just on Facebook we've had this year since we started it, there's 60, 63,000 people in Medicine Hat. So I don't know what percentage of them are on Facebook, but we're getting people, this is that nurturing process where we're getting people, we get people information, uh, they keep coming back for more and they keep engaging and they keep going deeper. And that's what we're trying to, uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Grace, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. I know Norm yeah. is too. Is there anything you wanted to add, Grace? Yeah, we've been um, we've been kind of answering questions as they come in here while you talk. Should be very oh. efficient. Um, <laughs> but if anyone wants to follow up, if there's anything we want to discuss more, we can absolutely do that. Um, one question came in. Someone was asking if they could um, apply as like two towns and the answer is like absolutely yes we're doing um a county right now lake county florida so if it makes more sense um especially like for rural places or smaller towns if you want to like apply two towns together um i think the main thing is as long as the leadership is excited about this program um and willing to work with us that is the big thing so however you know creatively you want to get together to do it i think is absolutely fine totally agree we, we we don't um we're looking for places that have the right kind of mix of leadership and and desire more than we are like it must be a city of this size I, the four places that we're working in lake county is like a hundred thousand people fast growing county in florida medicine hat is a sixty thousand in the middle of alberta in the oil fields it is uh yeah, I, I keep thinking of it like a Bismarck, North Dakota kind of place. I don't know if they would appreciate that or not, but I love Bismarck. So I feel like there's a, you know, Medicine Hat is a really great place. Um, Norman, Oklahoma is a university town outside of Oklahoma City. Um, and then Chisholm, Minnesota is a small town of 5,000 up on the Iron Range. These four places could not be more different from each other. And we've learned so much in each of them. And we've had like a really great dialogue in each place. Um, so yeah, I, I would I I I think that the key here is the desire and the leadership, um, as opposed to the geography and the place. We'll make it work. Yeah. We've got a question um, from Nadia here that maybe you can help answer, Chuck. Um, as the Community Action Lab progresses, do the communities collect data, engage in charrettes, et cetera? Um, collect data, yes. Um, I mean, we've had, it, it, you know, I, I've got medicine hat on the brain because we just got back from there. But I mean, there's been their staff has put together a ton of data because as we've been, as they brought stuff to us, we've asked questions of them and they're like, oh my gosh, we never thought of it that way. 
Let's look at that. Let's delve into that. Um, I, I, I think that when we're thinking about uh, things like charrettes, that that like dings a little bell in my head because I think about like formal public engagement processes where we sit in a room and we do, you know, solicit feedback. Norm kind of alluded to this, like, you know, write down what you think and we'll put it up on the wall and we'll reflect back to you. Um, this process is very much not that. Um, but we have, I mean, a medicine hat on the brain because I've been there the last couple of days. One of the things we talked about is we went out and looked at neighborhoods and talked about how to do bottom-up strong towns, tactical urbanism kind of projects to drive public engagement in a way that is not exactly a charrette, but I think has a, a, a kind of a, a, a more immediate and more real feedback loop for communities. And so training the action team on how to respond to challenges by doing that kind of thing is very much part of the, the, the conversation that we're having. Um, but we, we don't at any point do a traditional engagement where we bring people in, have them draw stuff, get public feedback. Um, this is not, th th that really is like a consulting thing and that's not what we're doing. We're, we're trying to inject ideas and train people how to do things different so that when we leave, uh, it's actually like a different uh, mode of operation and a different dialogue. Fair? Yeah, hopefully that answered uh, your question, Nadia. Uh, Richard has a great question out of Denver. He says, I have no team yet. How do I proceed? Well, the, the interesting thing about Denver specifically is that there's a very active uh, local conversation there. Um, so I would get hooked up with them first. Um, in fact, I'll give you a, a little secret. Uh, maybe it's not so much secret anymore, but our, one of our board members, uh, Andrew Burleson lives in Denver now, and he is part of the, he, he has joined the local conversation there. He's kind of kept a low profile, but I think they outed him as being an insider to the organization. Um, so uh, I know this team is, is good. I know they're competent and I know they're talking about doing stuff. I don't know if they're quite ready for this program yet or not, but, but perhaps maybe I, I, you know, there's a lot of capacity there. I would get connected with them and see what together as a group you can you can start to do. We did have a neighborhood group last year um, that was uh, one of the groups that we were talking to very seriously about how to make this happen and how to do it. And so I said, cities, um, you know, we, 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 I, I, I don't think uh, neighborhood groups would be off the table for us either. I mean, that would be something we would certainly entertain. It, it would it it would be a special circumstance, but you know I, I'm very open to that as well. Here's a perceptive okay. question as well. What were some examples that showed communities were not ready for a cal? I think you touched on that a little bit in terms of just the challenges of making sure that you have a full squad uh, that's available for this. Uh, he said there's not many hyper local conversations in the California northern coast. And I think that that is certainly one of the things where you, there's the concept, but then also the readiness or the interest, but then also the the preparedness for it. Um, do you have any thoughts on how we can, I, maybe this is, I, I see a lot of folks that I recognize that are, uh, you know, strong citizens uh, where their, their professional paycheck comes from other sources, other things. And this is what they do as enthusiasts, as, as people who care about where they live. Um, do you have encouragement beyond local conversation efforts uh, to how to cultivate that interest? Yeah, um, it's really good. I, I last year there was like three that I was cheering for. Like I, I would really, I would really hope that these places make it in, and they they didn't. One was a foundation that was working with a community, and the foundation really wanted it, and the community was rather skeptical, and it just became very clear as we were having this dialogue with them that they they were not um this was going to be something where we were going to be coming to the table in an intervention mentality as opposed to a coaching mentality and the funder wanted the intervention um but we we were not going to sign up for an, an intervention um another one was a neighborhood group and it was a neighborhood group that um 
was very active and had a lot of, of stuff going on. And they were, they were very accomplished, but they had some dialoguing that they needed to do because the type of engagement that we were going to have um, with them uh, needed to cross some racial barriers, needed to cross some other like community barriers and needed to be, um, uh, you know, I, I think broader than what they were maybe prepared to do, not really broader than what they wanted to do, but what they had the capacity to do at the time. And so we kind of parted with them with the idea that there would be some homework there and they would continue to kind of build and then come back to us and we'd see, you know, could we do this? Could we make this happen? Um, the third one that was really close last year that that didn't make it was a city that had a lot of promise. But as we got into it, um, it, it became apparent that it was one very dynamic person who had like a, you know, kind of like a, a very positive personality, but was dragging some other people with them. And um, that, that, that was, was not a situation that was going to get over the finish line or that I, I think had the, the potential to be really successful. So with that one, we told them, you, 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 you know, you've got to broaden <laughs> your, the work that you need to do, you're, you're, you're great, you're dynamic, you're enthusiastic, that's wonderful. Um, maybe we should come out and do an event there. Maybe we should come out and do something smaller or lesser to try to like introduce these things and get more than just you as the enthusiast. And then we can build up to bringing you back uh, the subsequent year. Um, so I, I think, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm in my mind thinking of the four places that we're working with this year, two of them are places where I have done events prior. Um, if you are not quite ready for this program, like we're, we really want to do this, but we're not quite ready. Um, signing up for an event, I mean, strongtowns.org slash events, or you can just, it's on our main menu, events is one of the big buttons. Um, you can sign up and Norm, myself, someone else from the team can come out and do a one day, day and a half level engagement um, and, you know, help kind of introduce these thoughts and ideas to people and see if you can broaden your, your coalition, your group that's working on this. I think that's maybe like the baby step to take. And in Northern California, I've been many times. Um, I would love to come back and, and do some more events. I, I've done, I think, three events in Reading, a couple in Santa Rosa, uh, Sacramento. I did a full day last year. Um, San Francisco and the Bay Area, we've not done uh, much there and would love to do way more. So if you're, you know, San Francisco North, like we've got contacts there and we've done events there, we'd love to come back and, and do another one. Chuck, I have a question for you that really reflects on some of the conversations that we had in Medicine Hat. If someone's a small business owner in a community and they're struggling with inflation and rising wage costs and things like that, um, what is the value to them when the community spends a considerable portion of, of funding to bring in a community action lab to do this type of engagement. Um, is there value? And maybe a second part of it is, couldn't they just do this on their own? It's, I've got Medicine Hat on the brain. Um, Medicine Hat, I, I, I don't know what the Canadian currency rate is, but $200,000 keeps getting thrown around. I think theirs is actually less than that for some reason I've got in my brain, but um, let's say it's 200,000. Um, this engagement is, all, is already saving them millions of dollars of investment that they were prepared to make that they are not making now because it would lose them millions and millions of dollars. Um, in fact, I had someone at City Hall today said, if we just stop this today and everybody went home, you've already saved this city uh, 50 times what the contract price was. Um, the Strong Town's you know, core insights have to do with this financial viability of, of a city. And a, a lot of what we have done in all the communities we've, we've worked in is help them evaluate 
uh, not only what their idea of prosperity is, but how that idea aligns with their financial capacity, their long-term commitments, and how they actually build wealth and prosperity in the community. Um, if I'm a downtown business owner, I feel like the journey you would be on in a strong towns community action lab is one of event number one. Oh my gosh. Uh, I hadn't thought about things in this way. Um, I've been, you know, plugged into the chamber and grow, grow, grow and all this. And now I'm thinking about this differently and I'm a little bit panicked. I'm a little bit worried. I start to get engaged. I start to learn more. I start to like discern. Now I've got questions on, oh my gosh, if we're not going to do this, which I'm used to doing, what do we do differently? And we start to answer that question. And ultimately we get you to a place where, um, as a small business owner, uh, we, you know, we hope that the community could evolve to a place where your taxes are not going up, your services are not going down. You are growing in a way that is building your community's wealth and prosperity in a way that also builds your customer base and your patronage base and, and, and helps you be a successful small business locally. Um, a strong town's approach is really about kind of that bottom up success. And, you know, you gave me the generalization of a small business. We met with a lot of small business owners in the last couple of days on, on, in downtown of, uh, of Medicine Hat. Um, those are places that have suffered greatly under the current kind of development approach. And as we talked about neighborhood investment and neighborhood development, and as we walked the streets and said, here's small things that we can do that you're maybe not thinking about, um, the ramifications of that for all those business owners are in there are, are enormous, are tremendous. In Medicine Hat, in specific, there's some antagonism between the downtown business owners and the city. Um, a lot of that is justifiable and understandable, right? From the business owner standpoint. And, and I'm really proud of the fact that, like I spent an hour and a half sitting with the chamber president, uh, Tuesday night and just kind of talking through these things. And we were able to communicate some of this to the staff in a way that didn't threaten them, help them kind of see things in a different way. And I anticipate that one of the things that's going to come out of just the last two days is a radical shift in how they permit certain things, approach certain things, work with business owners as instead of being come and fill out this form and go through this process that's comfortable for me, and then we will approve it maybe. Um, be, all right, show us what you want to do and we'll come out to you and kind of voice our concerns uh, on the fly and fix things as we go and, and make it an easier path for you. And the city staff was excited about that at the end. And I, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see how it works out. We've, um, we've got a great question from Anthony in the Q&A. Anthony says, we have a local Strong Towns group and community interest. However, I don't know where the local council is currently at with these ideas. Does the local council need to be open to the ideas or is it mainly concerned with local grassroots support? Um, I think in, in general, we're looking to have the council on board. I'm not going to say that as an absolute, but let me put it this way. If you were the city of Chisholm, the one we're working with, that's 5,000 people. There's no way you pull any of this off without the council. Cause it's like, it, it, it has to have it. If you are Denver and you're a neighborhood association in a neighborhood group, and you are kind of empowered within the city to do certain things. Um, I think there's a lot that we could do with that group that wouldn't necessarily have to have the full throated support of, of the city council. So I think it's really a matter of scale. And Anthony, I don't know the size of your community or the place. Um, but I, I, you know, my sense is that uh, you would want the city, we would want to see unless you're a very big city and this is a neighborhood kind of group that is a, a little bit more kind of formal standing, uh, we would want to see at least some support from the city council that they were interested in this, they were open to this, they wanted a dialogue around this. And then I think our deeper questions would be about what the action team was and what that looked like. 
Um, because if this is truly like a, an action team made up of neighborhood people, not uh, any city staff or any like that, um, that's a different kind of engagement. And I can't say that, I'm, I'm not going to say that we wouldn't do that, um, but we would want to, um, we'd want to take some time and talk through what we were trying to accomplish together and how we do that in, in the best way. Um, because it, if, well, let, let me put it this way, in an extreme case, if a neighborhood group is antagonistic with a city, not suggesting you are, but in a worst case scenario, like if we were working at cross purposes, um, that's gonna make it very hard to accomplish stuff. So as part of a strategy working with a neighborhood group would need to be, how do we bring public officials and other people on board as part of this engagement? And that, that would be something we'd have to strategize and discuss as part of this kind of discernment process we're going through. Okay. My gut reaction says, you know, 228,000 population, then maybe a neighborhood group would make sense. I mean, that's a, you know, that, that I think in Medicine Hat, it wouldn't make sense. In a city with, you know, over 200,000 people, it might. So let's talk. Yeah, I think that's the takeaway is I think we'd be interested to learn more about the, the specific situation. Um, so yeah, submit an application and let's chat. Um, and then- Grace, if I'm, if I'm right, I mean, the application process that, that you, Norm, and the rest of the team, I, I, I have, I've seen it a little bit. I have not been deeply involved. I know you guys have. Um, the application process is not one of these, you know, 50 page sign in blood, put your deposit down. It's really like a, a re, like a, let's, let's have a dialogue kind of thing. Right. Can you, you talk maybe a little bit about that? Cause I'm yeah. We did add a few more questions this year, so um, it's a little a little bit longer. But yeah, it's it's basically like tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's schedule a meeting and let's talk, um, and let's you know we'll ask you some questions, you ask us some questions, and let's decide together if you know if it's a good idea to move forward with this. Um, and we're, we're not getting any applications that we just reject, right? I mean, the idea is like you make an application, it gives us a basis to have a dialogue. That, that's right. kind of how and it works, I, right? I think the idea is that if you're applying for this, you're not just giving us one word answers. Like, right. you, hopefully you care a little more than that. <laughs> Otherwise you might get, you know, you might get the cold shoulder, but um, and yeah, I wanted a, to point out a question that we got asked a little earlier too about um, someone asked if we, if they needed to have a letter of intent for the financial commitment like upfront with the application? The answer is no. We just want to know that you're working on it. Um, we want to know that you have like a general idea of where that money is going to come from and you're not just hoping it'll fall out of the sky um, before you get selected. So that that would be, you know, my answer for that. Have an idea, but you don't you don't have to have the money ready to go when you apply. Um, and Grace, another comment that I would add to uh, just the prior topic is the fact that we learned a lot from the strongest town contest that we run every year. And in the strongest town contest, what's amazing is we we ask for a little bit more upfront in terms of tell us about your community. This year, we said, you know, make sure you've got some great photos of your community. And what it does is even that process galvanizes a group of people to come together in ways that otherwise it just doesn't happen. And it kind of gives you, I mean, for all the folks that are on the, that are listening to this, it gives you an opportunity to have a great ask of someone, hey, can you join me in this this little project? We don't know where it's going to go, uh, but we want to, let's see where this takes us. And the consequence of that is I think even in the questions that we ask, there's some really interesting prompts where it's sort of, you know, do you ever do an interview or a conversation with someone and you're like, why are they asking me that? Like, and they're getting you to a place. And so I think there's even some strong towns, healthy sort of indicators that you could actually use as somewhat of a self-assessment in your community to say, how is my community doing on this front? Like when we write, how are we doing? What, what's our bill of health look like? And, and we're not asking for the best or the strongest communities. We always say this with the strongest town contest too. While we say you're the strongest town winner, you know, in Brattleboro, Vermont, at the same time, the part of that process is the acknowledgement of deep needs and deep challenges and deep systemic you know, barriers that will be addressed over time with humility, with patience, with a, a, a sense of deliberate purpose. And so that, that's a big part of it as well. Uh, the, another question quickly from Lonnie, she says she has to go, but she asked, do we do it every year? Uh, and we're opening up the intake each year for five communities. 
And so that's part of the process as well. So uh, you can submit this year, or if if you want to go ahead and submit uh, repeatedly over over the next number of years, uh, we certainly are open to that as well. That, that's our intention. And I guess what I told um, our board, and then when we talked about this program, and and they said, "Yep, green light, go do it," is that you know in five years we want to have uh, two dozen communities that we can point to as being places that. Well, as what you said, Norm, are not perfect, are not doing everything perfectly and everything, right, but where we have um, case studies and examples of good practices and good habits that we can write about, shine a spotlight on, share, promote, have those people on our podcast. We, 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 um, our entire organization and our entire approach is about uh, scaling this this movement, these ideas. And what we're really looking for are places that are going to do great things that we can then tell other people about, because we want other. We can't make it to every city in the U.S., but if you're doing great stuff and we can tell others about it, guess what? Other people will copy it and learn from it and become better as a result. And so this is why I use that intervention versus life coach kind of thing. We are looking for the places that, like, we're ready to go down this path, and we can like really get you going, and then we can hold you up as a success and say, "Hey, everybody, look at this! Don't you want to be more like this?" Because then, helping one place helps dozens of places simultaneously, even if we can't get to all of them. Right. All right, we've got two minutes left. Um, I think. We're just about done with questions. If anyone has questions beyond this, please email me, um, grace at strongtowns.org. Be happy to help. We'll be sending out um, this recording shortly after here. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll also capture all the, e the links and materials we sent out in the chat as well. Um, send out to everyone. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I hope this was helpful. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we're very excited, and it's a little like um, so like anticipating Christmas, right? Like, what are the places that come in? And I remember last year we had like eighteen applicants, and it was so cool to see. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I would love to go to all these different places. It's so really please, fun to um, getting to know everyone and your community, totally. and just like learning about each place. Yes, so looking forward to it. Thank you.